The United States military recently sent the M142 high mobility artillery rocket system as part of a $700 million aid package to Ukraine. Bars were used in the attack. The launchers are capable of firing six rockets at a time. Four of these systems are in Ukraine now, with four more on the way. Time out. Did he just say they sent four HIMARS systems to Ukraine? The Russians have 800 artillery pieces in the Donbass region right now. Is four of those going to make a difference? Well, it could turn out that it does make a huge difference. Very, very sophisticated, far right exceeding anything the Russians have in terms of capability. Can someone please tell me who made this sophisticated HIMARS meme? It's haunting my dreams. Which type of systems is more useful in war, traditional cannons or rocket artillery? In order to answer that question, we're going to need to look at the tactical strengths and weaknesses of the HIMARS, and why it was even designed and built in the first place. But first... Run away! Retreat! 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 The enemy has me completely surrounded. Wait a second, what's that? Is it this episode's sponsor, the Attack Pack? Thank God for this supply drop, it came just in time. A TSG T55 tactical combo wrench, a hat for my dome piece, a protective cleaning and maintenance mat, a ton of cool tactical gear and awesome sh** in the attack pack that I can't even mention here, but I can say it's for your constitutionally legal tools. Now the enemy stands no chance against me. Attack Pack is a monthly subscription box that delivers tactical and EDC gear directly to your face each month. Why am I making a noise with my mouth? The way it works is every month, the team over at Tac Pack puts together a box of different items that they know that you guys would like in the military community. The kind of products that you can expect to be in here are going to be SOG, Mechanics, 511, Magpul, Mission First, all the stuff that you guys love. That means there's going to be mag carriers, cleaning kits, medical gear in here. If you click our link, then in the first month, you'll receive a $50 mystery item. So if you guys are looking for a way to support the channel, click the link in the description, use our code task and purpose and get your tack pack today. Rocket artillery in the US military is a relatively new concept. During World War II, it was mainly only the Soviet army who utilized rocket artillery because they were cheap to mass produce and effective against a wide open area. The plan was to overwhelm the enemy with that volume of fire. The psychological effects of rocket artillery are frequently noted since they have a loud screaming noise and they land in this large open radius. These early low accuracy unguided rockets often had worse bark than they did have bite. I've even seen larger fireworks shot off at parties in Florida. On the other hand, the United States Army chose to stick to conventional cannons for decades, choosing instead to focus on narrow point targets. All of the effort was put into making weapons that were more accurate and precise. The reason being was more of a logistical one than a sympathetic one. It's simply more expensive to ship large quantities of artillery munitions across an entire ocean where they were fighting in Europe. The Russians, on the other hand, could afford to manufacture tons of rocket artillery and just ship it close by. The fighting doctrine ruled by precision stuck in artillery thinking all the way until the 1970s when the US Army decided to change course abruptly. They saw how the Israeli army used rocket artillery to take out surface to air missile sites with rocket artillery. The benefits of having longer range than traditional cannons was starting to look really good. The Cold War era fighting doctrine that went along with rocket artillery was for the US to hide several of these M270s in forests, then they could launch strikes with these cluster munitions. And in this way, they would try to appear like a bigger force than they really were. The strategy was to hit soft targets like headquarters and fuel depots. At the time, the US believed they needed a capability that would give them an advantage in a situation where the army expected to be outnumbered two to one against the Russians in Europe. So they decided that the M270 rocket artillery vehicle would be used exactly in this way against Iraqi SAM sites, destroying 24 of them within five minutes, helping guarantee air superiority for the US forces. This is how combined operations works within the US doctrine. In 2010, the US created a smaller lightweight version called the M142 HIMARS, which had 50% of the firepower, so it was less firepower compared to the M270, because it only had one rocket pod instead of two. Each one of those rocket pods can carry six rockets. The fact that it can fire six separate rockets is a little bit misleading because when you use the precision, more advanced munitions, it can only fire one from the pod. Just look at the United States Department of Defense try to explain that. Uh, so this is not something that where you launch off, you know, multiple, despite it being a multiple uh, launch rocket system, you actually don't want to la uh, launch off multiple rockets at a time. These are precision guided uh, systems with extended range. And so it was towed by a much more mobile, faster wheeled armored vehicle called the FMTV. This vehicle weighs about 20,000 pounds less than the M270 at a total of 35,000 pounds. 
The wheeled HIMARS is much faster than its predecessor with a top speed of 85 kilometers or 53 miles per hour. That's about twice the max speed on road. There is a debate about which type of rockets were sent to Ukraine, and it's no small matter. The answer to the type of rocket sent makes a huge difference whether or not it will make that much of a difference for the Ukrainian forces. The capabilities vary widely. Was it the original M26 rockets? I mean, that thing is designed to open in midair before it reaches the target, and it rains down 644 separate M77 submunition hand grenade bomblets. It's basically a cluster bomb without calling it a cluster bomb. They cover an entire one by one kilometer grid square. That's why I got the nickname Grid Killer. Some claim that it's an unearned title though, because those small grenades were ineffective against armored vehicles. We had over 700,000 of these rockets in our arsenal at one point, but they've been shelved and most of them have been deactivated or decommissioned. The reason for that is because those rockets had a 4% failure rate, which means a ton of those 600 bomblets would just not detonate. And that, that's a huge problem for collateral damage and wrecking the land that it's fired on. And it's just not efficient. This is why the US switched rocket designs to what's called unitary bombs that fire 200 pound single explosive warheads. So we're back to precision again. I did some research to figure out exactly which type of rocket artillery was sent to Ukraine. There are almost a dozen different types of rockets with max ranges varying from 180 miles to a limited 40 miles. And the DOD isn't out there giving out any specific information or confirmation on which type of rocket they sent. Luckily for us, we can use open source detectives to rule out which type of rockets were likely not sent. So this Twitter thread did all the work by analyzing current rocket stockpiles. The M26 and the M30 were decommissioned, so it's probably not cluster bomb munitions. The ATAC MS missiles, which the DOD said they would not send to Ukraine, probably because they're afraid of Ukrainian artillery firing these rockets 180 miles deep into the Russian homeland, which could be seen as justification for Russia launching nukes in retaliation. The HIMARS will allow them to do is to get greater standoffs. So right now, uh, the howitzers we provided them have about a 30 kilometer uh, range. The HIMARS have more than twice uh, that, which will allow them, even with fewer systems, greater standoff. And the other thing that distinguishes this is an extraordinary amount of precision. This leaves only a few possible options for what we could have sent. It'll likely either be the M30A1, the M31, or the M31A rockets. All of these are 200 pound unitary bombs and Lockheed Martin has produced a total of 60,000 of them, leaving them a large stockpile to send. It's possible they sent the improved version, the M39A1, which has a 500 pound unitary warhead that the US still uses, but they only have 513 that were produced and we know from combat reports, 47 of those were used in Iraq and Afghanistan. So that only leaves about 466 left. I don't think that they sent that one. Keep in mind though, the Russians have been reported to be using cluster munitions with their rockets on entire cities. So these rockets that the US are sending, they have critical GPS guided ability, allowing them to strike targets 40 miles away, which is about twice the range compared to conventional artillery. But it's very different fighting doctrine compared to the Russian one. Even though rocket artillery was originally meant to be this area weapon for the US military, they couldn't help themselves from going back to the philosophy of quality instead of quantity. So the HIMARS relies on high training and operator skill, something that could be potentially a problem when you're trying to train soldiers on it quickly. But unfortunately, uh, it requires training. It requires a logistics train. And those are things that uh, still need to be worked through to get those in the actual hands of those who need to fire those systems. Training uh, will take a couple of weeks, uh, three weeks we think for uh, to get the, the Ukrainians trained on how to operate the system. There'll be some additional training uh, for maintenance. It works best when target coordinates and GPS data is sent straight from a UAV that's targeting an enemy. So the UAV sends that target data to the HIMARS computer fire control system. This then automatically creates a ballistic firing solution for the rocket, and the single warhead is meant to hit the single target. On the other hand, the Russian artillery needs to be manually optically sighted, so it takes up to 12 minutes for them to do that. Then they're able to fire a volley of 12 rockets. Each rocket opens up and drops hundreds of 9N-235 submunitions over the target. It's area target rocket artillery versus point target. One of the downsides of using rocket artillery is that it sends a large visual and audible signature. Every time you fire, it's difficult to hide after firing them because it kicks up a bunch of dust and smoke from the rocket exhaust. Artillery duels are defined by this game of cat and mouse. That's why it's important for rocket artillery to be on wheels so they can relocate quickly because they're gonna be seen quickly. The downside to depending on these highly technologically advanced units like the HIMARS is cost. 
you can't afford to lose them. The M142 goes for around a total of $5 million each, around $2.95 million for the launcher, six hundred dollars for the FMTV carrier, plus each one of the M31 rockets costs $100,000 each. An advantage of the US rocket artillery is that it can reload quickly with only five minutes of time thanks to this crane lifting operating system. Still slower than conventional artillery though, which can shoot two rounds per minute sustained. Russian counterparts for rocket artillery takes up to 20 minutes to reload. If the United States were to send a few platoons of HIMARS and hundreds of these technologically advanced rockets, then it could make a huge difference on the battlefield. But that's far from reality. Working, they're proving their worth. Let me show you a photograph of what HIMARS can do to Russian logistics. These are images of Russian ammunition dumps exploding after reportedly being struck by missiles from a HIMARS system. Previously, Ukraine could not reach these munition dumps. The fact is we're only sending four HIMARS and Russia knows it's almost an empty gesture. On the other hand, if we gave them more systems and higher powered rockets, it might provoke Russia into launching missiles at a NATO base. It's a tough decision for the DOD to make and for the government to make, but if they were to miscalculate, it could lead to a larger global conflict. Putin already threatened to strike new targets that they haven't yet been hitting if the US sends more of these long range weapons. The best case scenario for the Ukrainian armed forces using these is to identify expensive equipment and raise the cost of war for the Russians. Outside of that, this isn't gonna offer them much new capabilities than they already have. These US rocket artillery pieces have never been used in this role that they were originally designed for, this artillery versus artillery. They're untested when it comes to long range precision artillery duels because the United States military hasn't fought against an enemy who has artillery abilities for decades, not in this massive sustained war. If the United States were to have a sudden change of heart and send the latest rocket technology, they would send the precision strike missiles from Raytheon. It has a range so long that it could it had to be capped in order to not break international treaties for many years. It can hit a target at 500 kilometers or 310 miles, and they were able to make it small enough to fit two of them in the pod instead of one. It can now go further than 500 kilometers though because the US backed out of an intermediate long range nuclear force treaty in 2019 under President Trump. There was something of a controversy about it at the time about whether or not that was a good idea to leave that treaty. Some said Putin was already developing these hypersonic long range missiles that violated the treaty. So why should we cap ourselves at 500 kilometers? Others said that it would make the world less safe to leave the treaty. I'll leave those big boy questions up to the officer types.